Sherry Blanton, the Southern Gardener, Calhoun County Master Gardeners, and the library is visiting us today because I couldn't go to the library and we wanted to talk about spring flowers and there's no better way to talk about spring flowers than to actually look at them growing. The daffodils have quit blooming. They're a little bit untidy, but the worst thing you can do for daffodils is cut off this green foliage because it's making a garden for next year. This is a wonderful lavender that will grow wonderful blue flowers next summer. Over there, we've got a little princess spirea that comes out this wonderful chartreuse and eventually turns green and has little pink flowers. We are standing in front of my rebirth garden that I've written about and talked about. When the tornado came, it destroyed half of this garden from about their back. And there were two big trees and a lot of dogwoods and a lot of other plants that just disappeared. So I decided that the tornado would not beat the gardener. So this is my rebirth tree. It's a beautiful Japanese maple that I put in. And around it, we've got encore azaleas that are still blooming. And they will bloom all year. We've got Asiatic lilies getting ready to bloom all over the place. They're about a week away from blooming. And the pansies are still blooming. Pansies are a three season plant. They're beautiful in the spring, the winter, and the fall. We've got right in front, we've got yuccas, color guard yuccas. And for those people who say, my ground is terrible, I don't like to water, those are friendly yuccas and they're beautiful in the winter. Probably one of the prettiest things here. And we've got a butterfly visiting the peony. How wonderful. This is a peony that I planted last year, and I don't know if you can see how beautiful it is. And we see the butterflies. That's a gift. We see the butterfly visiting the peony. And coming on around, we've got a lower petal that came up by itself, and I just keep it clipped back because I like the color. We've got some daisies coming up, and we've got a late blooming azalea that is getting ready to bloom right now. And I'm not sure if you can see the flowers, but they're little pink dainty flowers. As you'll notice, I love Japanese maples, and we're going to be seeing a lot of them. These are all really old camellias that I've had. As we move around, we see this wonderful Japanese maple that I've had here for many, many years. You can see by the trunk. This is these are fabulous Japanese maples. And we don't think of how much leaves can add to a garden, but this wonderful chartreuse and the, the tree next to it has got a blend of green and kind of purplish leaves. I don't know the names of all of them. This one is Orangeola. This was a native azalea that has quit blooming. This is an early spring bloomer. And if you see, we have a few camellias left even in the spring. Now, I decided I had seen this. This is an ornamental blueberry. You don't actually get any blueberries on it, but it's actually got little flowers on it that bloom in the spring, but it never actually makes leaves. And a typical, typical springtime flower it's going to be the columbine and you see the purple coming up and we have it in a lot of different colors this is a fabulous plant it's called a carex and that is my new collectible it stays like this 24 7 it does not get ugly in the winter it stays just like this it likes some shade it likes to be watered but it's a wonderful wonderful accent plant I know most people take a juga for granted, but it is a fabulous springtime flower, the wonderful blue and purple, and if you have a field of it, I, th I think it's quite lovely, and it really stands out in the garden. Coming on around, here is a pink columbine. Right here, uh, we've got one clematis bloom still coming up. I don't know if you can get a close-up of this, but this is an early spring bloomer, and you can see I have it grown on a trellis, or it will ramble everywhere. But it, it, it's really beautiful. I have another trellis here, pardon it, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to find a home. 
Here are some pink columbines that are just really, really, really speak out for what columbines are. And I love them. I didn't plant them, but the more the merrier. And this is a plant that most people don't think of putting in the semi shade. It won't. It was blooming. It's a wintertime bloomer, and it is a ornamental plant. And it's still actually got one flower on it sitting in there. I am trying to make a new bed around here featuring sedums because my sprinkler doesn't reach here. This is a salvia gregii. Doesn't need a lot of watering in the summer. It's a wonderful pollinator plant and this one is just shining. It starts blooming in the spring and it will bloom until next fall and it's really, really beautiful. I have Again, here is another columbine, but if you can see, the inside of this space is more ruffled, so it's a little bit different. I didn't, again, I didn't plant these, they just came up, and you see that that one's even a different kind, got a different face on it. This is a fabulous lamb's ear. We've got right here three different kinds of sedums. And they'll all bloom in late summer and have big rose-like flowers on them. And I decided I wanted to try to make this into a sedum bed. Again, it's another salvia brevia. Texas salvia. It's got a beautiful little face. And here is another clematis, which is a spring bloomer. And it, it's purple. And it's got it. H.S. Young. I have a label on that one. And eventually it will grow all the way up to this trellis and be really astounding. Terry, tell us what a sedum is. A sedum is a succulent. Okay. It does not need a lot of water and it doesn't get many diseases. And it can take the heat and stay green and lush. It will disappear in the winter. It's a perennial. But when it comes up, they're just beautiful, and there are hundreds of different ones, and I I have started to try to collect them, and once I get started, it's hard to stop me, so I have, I have more in here than I had bought last year, and I've got them in front, and I'm going to try to put them all around in here, because they're basically not a troublemaker. Oh, I've got one native azalea still blooming in there, that one blooms a little bit later. And you can see one of the lilies is starting to bloom. And here's another wonderful spring flower. It's called the Baptisia. I've got a, pur a purpley kind, and that's, that's almost a magenta one right there. These beautiful multicolored are abelias. And this is a euphorbia. And these are the blooms on it. And my husband said he loved them. He said he loved the little red dot in them. And they get really big. Now they will do die back during the summer, but right now they are beautiful, especially up against that red tree. Mm -hmm. That chartreuse up against the red tree is just really fabulous. Mm -hmm. This is a bar, and it has it's covered with little pink flowers. And again, you see that the pansies have survived. And the uh, the color guard yucca is. In the winter, it is gorgeous because it is just bright, bright yellow. And then again, we're looking at my rebirth tree, which made me think when I planted it that life would continue in my garden. And we're standing right here, and if we look up, we can see the blood good that's been there about 20 years. It has the most magnificent summer color, spring color, it's fall color, it's just absolutely out of this world. Now, tell us the name of that one again. A blood good. Blood good. And it makes a big tree, and it is a deciduous tree, and held on to its leaves a long time this winter. But the color, I, I'm not sure whether the camera is picking up all the shades in it, up against that blue sky. Japanese maple almost looks orangey, but it's kind of an orangey red. Uh -huh. 
this camellia right here, and I'm not sure if you can see it. short one you notice how big everybody else is that one was almost that big but when the tree fell down it broke it in half we dug it up we kept it in a swimming pool and then when the time was right we planted it and it survived and i call myself a survivor and that camellia and this year it even bloomed and which one is this one? The little short one. What, that yeah, is but Professor Tinsley. Professor Tinsley, okay. Yes, Dr. Tinsley. Dr. Tinsley, okay. And what yes. color is it? Pink, Ooh. baby pink. He's Dr. Tinsley. And then over to the left we have Professor Sargent. So I got their titles. Professor up. Sargent and Dr. Dr. Tinsley. Tinsley. Okay. And I don't know if you can pick up the colors in that native azalea. Now, why is this called a native azalea? This is native to Alabama? Yes, it's okay. a, yes. And it is a deciduous azalea. Okay. Regular azaleas are evergreen and they lose all their leaves in the winter. Whereas this one will drop all its leaves and looks like a bunch of sticks. Unfortunately, we can't pick up the smell on our cameras, but the smell is heavenly. And I've got one in the back we can probably get closer to and smell. One of my favorite plants. Not only is it beautiful, and I love the chartreuse leaves, it is a spider wart. You can see the beautiful purple flowers, but it has a lot of sentimental value because it came from Teresa Kaiser's mother's yard. And I love it. I love the chartreuse in the garden with the purple. That is just a wonderful contrast. Got another euphorbia, and this is all tiger lilies. They spread. Tiger lily spread, and I've got more of you getting here, but tiger lily spread. And you can see how many I've got, and I offer them to people and no one wants them. But these are, will be ginger lilies that will have a heavenly smell, and another rose, and these are an iris. I just broke off the one that had left. But I think the most fascinating plant in my yard are these pitcher plants. These are carnivorous plants that live on bugs. And you can see the little hood here and the bugs get trapped in there and go down to the bottom and feed and keep going. And you can see here's another one. But I think these flowers, which are a springtime treat, are just, I'm gonna make sure you see this one and uh, these are just coming up there a little bit later. These are plants that are known as bog plants. They're mixed, uh, they're planted in a mixture of sand and peat moss. And you can plant them in a pot with no drainage, but I've got some drainage in mine. Um, this, you can see the little heads coming up there and that they will attract the bugs and you do not feed them anything yourself. You let them feed themselves. You don't put pieces of meat down there. Uh, they do not like fertilizer and don't respond well to it. So you never fertilize them. And they really don't like water out of the hose. So when it rains, I try to keep a bucket here and use the rainwater to water them. Now this one is a little bit slower, but I see that it's starting to come up. But I have seen these in, in, in bog, and I've seen people take great big swimming pools and plant them in there and make a bog garden. This has probably got, this probably weighs 75 pounds. I didn't realize when I bought it that it would take so much sand and so much peat moss. We just kept putting it in and putting it in. But I, having these is worth every bit of me dumping sand in here. See, I even think this one, this one's a little bit different even from these. They've all, they're all a little bit different. And they have names. I saved the names so I would know what they are. And here's another clematis. I decided I was going to collect clematis. So I bought a lot of them and now I'm trying to figure out how to teach them to grow on a trellis. And I've got, I've got this one 
This one is just on a stake for right now, but I will be getting it a trellis. This, you were asking about a sedum. Sedums come in a lot of shapes and colors. This is a beautiful sedum. I mean, and it will have a beautiful flower. And the reason I love it in this pot, it doesn't require a lot of water. And these kind of urns sometimes are hard to get watered. But this pot loves it here. And yet here's another sedum that I also love. And it will have a great, excuse the weed, it will have beautiful pink flowers. And yet this is another sedum. Um, and I'm not sure which one it is. It's just coming out, but I love it. And here's another beautiful sedum that I hope is going to grow up this trellis. But I didn't know a lot about sedums until I went and started looking at them and I decided that I could collect them. And I also am collecting, I'm also collecting sedums purely because I needed something else. Yeah, this collect. is the clematis, right? Right. And this is called. Ja I believe it's Giacomondo, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's Giacomondo. Yeah, and I love, I love the two color and the stripes. And eventually, I'm hoping it will grow up this trellis. And I may, it may get too big for this trellis, and I may have to move it. But I'm gonna, I'll start it. I'll um, climb it it up, and I'll, I just put the trellis in it. So I'm gonna start it up climbing up this trellis and eventually like this one it's filled up this trellis it's taken a lot of years they do like some lime so I give them some lime right before right before growing time here's something that we miss it's a kind of a Solomon seal that, that you don't see a whole lot of and look at those will be little berries and I think it is just really beautiful I just, I noticed the other day how pretty it was. This is probably one of my favorite Japanese papers. If you can get close to it, and we'll see what its name is. Uh, this is Incon, but see the beautiful, beautiful foliage on this, and I love the color. This, this one bears looking at. I saw that on one of the maple sites that they picked this is the maple of the year. And as soon as I saw it, I said, oh, I've got to have one. And these are small ones, and they will stay in a pot for a little while, and then they'll get bumped up to another pot. And I've been taking them out of the pots and planting them in the ground recently. But this, if you can see how beautiful, see all the coloration in here. I can see why it got tree of the year. You were asking about sedums. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. It's called Vera Jameson. And I just, I, I love them. I just, they're so dear and they're so trouble free. Here's another sedum. And you can do sedums either in pots or in the ground, right? Right. Okay. I have both. Mm -hmm. This one is called Hispanica Variety Minor. And it's a little tiny one, but what it's going to do is grow and droop over. This is a citrus tree that will not ever make citrus, but I love I love the chartreuse and the green on it. And that right in here is a fern that just comes up for itself. And you see the stumped off bushes. Mm -hmm. They got in front of my windows, and I do not like to have something in front of my windows, so we cut it. One of the primary rules is not to cover up your windows with your foundation plant. So we cut them back and we're going to let them do. They've gotten an extreme haircut. And once they come back, we're going to keep them as small, fat bushes instead of tall, leggy bushes. And what were they? Oh, those are a kind of tea olive, which are very different. Mm. Rhodophyllundia. They smell good. Uh, yes, they do. Mm -hmm. And the tea olives are just about finished blooming. The, this is a neat tree that I just got bald smith. The coloration is exquisite. These are kind of neat tree bushes that not many people have. This is the kind of mahonia, but it's not the kind of mahonia that has the big blue leaves on it and the big prickly leaves. 
This, I believe, is called Fortune Eye. I'm not sure, but I keep it clipped back because I don't want it to grow over my window. But it's really beautiful and thick. And I have bordered it another, this is another fabulous Japanese maple. She's called Keisha Gone Wild. And I bought her for her name. But she's also beautiful. And she's going to be a weeper. She's Keisha? Gonna, it's Keisha Gone Wild? Geisha. Geisha. Or Geisha. Oh, okay. Do you oh. say Geisha, Geisha or Geisha? I used to get yeah, Geisha. All yeah. right. It's Geisha Gone Wild. Geisha Gone I like it. I like it. I would have bought it just for the yeah, name, too. I would have bought it. And I've got one in here. It's called Chicky Chicky Boo Boo. There you go. I don't know where Chicky Chicky Boo Boo is, but I know. It's a children's book. Chicky Chicky Boo Boo is a children's book. Okay, well, yeah. she's also a Japanese maple. Oh, wow. If you look under the tree at that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful azalea, I bought it in the florist department at Publix. And I said, oh, my goodness, I'm going to take that home, and I'm going to enjoy it, and then I'm going to pot it, and it's going to be out in my yard. Uh, here are two great plants. You're asking about sedum? Uh-huh. I'm going to walk right in yep. front of you. Excuse me. Excuse the camera. This is a sedum. A little bitty one. This is another sedum. This is a fabulous pollinator plant called lamium. And you see the precious little flowers that, that bloom in the spring. And you see a piece fell off of it. It's growing there. But this is a, a pollinator feast right here. And of course, I've got a huge hosta down here because I collect hostas too. I collect anything that doesn't move. This is another of the Carexes and you can see the size it gets. I also collect these. These are called Cuparas. And you buy them for their foliage and they are evergreen and we'll look at some and some with their flowers on them. They almost look like geraniums. The leaves on them. Uh, they're prettier. They're prettier. Yeah, because they, they have got I'll show you the different characters that they've got. I'm trying to line this with papers. This is one called Caramel that is just, look at the colors in it. Look at this one. And this is what they do. Let me, let me walk back here. Look at this one. It's purple and mm -hmm. green. I see the little tiny flowers. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. But you see all the, here's another one that I just repotted. Mm -hmm. And, oh. This is my fabulous Japanese maple. It is only this tall. This is a Japanese maple This tree? is a Japanese wow. maple. And its legs are only about, I think its trunk is probably about this tall. Not real tall. But I'm guessing it's at least six feet around. Wow. Isn't it beautiful? It's gorgeous. I mean, it's, I worried so about it when they said we were going to have a frost. Mm -hmm. In this bed right here, mm -hmm. we've got... Um, the leftovers of the Lenten roses that bloomed, and I'll go over, I'll have to sneak in front of you again. I wanted you to see the flowers. They, they might have been pink or purple or white, but when they start to fade and get ready to go to seed, they all turn kind of green. And here you see they're getting ready to go to seed, and then they reseed and make more. And the more I have, the happier I am. And there's a couple of beautiful ferns in here. Here's our friend Geisha Gone Wild. And I don't know if you can get up close and see how beautiful this is. Look at the color in it. I mean, it's just... I mean, you cannot find a painting that beats nature. Mm -hmm. And you know... We're all completely freaked out about the pandemic and can't go out and can't do this and can't do that. And nature just goes right on. Well, you, you can know? get out in nature. You can that get outside. Sure. There's my bench where I mm -hmm. sit and just look at things and feel better about them. I just got this azalea and it's a late bloomer and I see it's already dry after having three inches of rain but it's called Valentine. It's pretty. Isn't it pretty? It's gorgeous. I, I don't have a, an azalea this color and I thought it would be gorgeous. That is pretty. I also got this beautiful fern. If you've got a shady garden don't say there's nothing you can plant because you can have these everywhere. The hookahs are shade plants so you can have and look look at all the different colors. Mm -hmm. This is a fabulous plant right here. 
It's called a Japanese Faxia. And look, I think it's very tropical looking. And I don't grow mine in full sun. You can see the lily is getting ready to bloom. If you look down in it, in another week or two, it will be covered with blooms. I just was watching a video and it said if you don't, if you have a bird bath, and you're tired of it and you don't want to work on the fountain anymore, plant something in it. So I put a yucca and four sedums in there and it doesn't take, I cut a lot of it off because my new dog was meeting these eye to eye and so I cut a lot of them off and now she doesn't come out here. We had some things in here and we've taken them up and again we put these gorgeous Japanese maples out here. And here are the pansies which are still doing, usually they're gone by now. But if you look at this right here, it's beautiful. These are pretty. Oh, what pretty faces on here. I think these, not these I love these two tone I, ones. Oh, Those no, are gorgeous. They are called violas. Yes, okay. And they're smaller than regular pansies. Yes, right? yes. and I'm going to tell you, they have bloomed their heart out and they're, they're trying gorgeous. to finish. I'm getting over here. This is sparkling burgundy, euconomous, or, um, and it will come up with a, it's a, called a pineapple lily. And it will send up a big stalk with something on the edge that looks just like a pineapple. I had not saved the best for last, but how many people think of an amaryllis in the spring? This is an that my neighbor grew this amaryllis. He has a whole backyard full of them. But you don't often think of an amaryllis in the spring. But here we go. We got the amaryllis blooming. I mean, this this is a traffic stopper, and he brought me down one and had, told me I could have it. And I said, "Look, you have to keep it because you're the mastermind. I've got a whole bunch that I saved over, and one of them's blooming. And if you ever hear somebody talking about hen and chicks, that's yeah. a hen and chick. I'm hoping. Usually, I kill them, but I'm trying again to start. And you can see new life is coming up. The calla lilies are coming up." And this is a precious, this is another toe Now this is a sedum. Okay. And it looks like it has little oh, pearls it on does. it. It does, how pretty. Isn't it beautiful? It is. And it will droop over, but this is a sedum. That is so cute. Isn't it cute? Uh -huh. Who can resist something so cute? I couldn't. I can't resist. I know it's a mallow or a hibiscus. I got it from Jason Tyler. Look at this. Look at the look at the flower on it. And it comes up the strangest places. It started over there in that flower bed, then it came up over here, and then it came up in another place. But I'm terrified that I might lose it. Because it is just it came up in a crack, but this one is doing great. Tell us about the roses in the background. Oh those are gorgeous. And walking down the path, you see all the hoopers and all the different colors. I mean, it's, it, it, it's just, and every one of them is different. I know if you like my husband and say, oh, they all look alike. No, they don't. This one is solid green. This is green with specks. This is green with red. This one's green with purple. This one's green with kind of a brown. Here's another student. Let me back up. This is green shadow, and it's just, even touching it is just wonderful, and you can see, uh-oh, that lily then I don't know what's wrong with that, we'll have to sit and watch that, but the lilies are all getting to bloom, but I've got a couple of neat things to show you over here. This is an asnathus, 
Fiala, and if you, you can see the new road comes out there. Can you see the new road? Is there? It'll turn. It'll turn green, but when it first comes out, it's pink. And this is the most exciting thing. I got this lilac last year, and it's not pretty to look at anymore. But it blooms, and I'm so excited. So it's not too hot down here for lilacs? Not supposedly for this one. Okay. And this one is called Red Pixie. And according to Hay Jackson, it can take the sun. There's another clematis that I just got and planted. Because you gave her some. No, because she came to the Master Gardener plant sale and I said, you must have one of these. You succumbed to it, didn't you, Teresa? I did. Everybody does. People come and that's the first thing they want to know, is there one. Uh -huh. All right. She knew y'all were coming and she is showing out. She is gorgeous. This is a rhododendron. Rhododendrons typically do not like it here, but this one does. Hayes Jackson told me the big plants can see. This one, Anna Rose Whitney. Anna Rose Whitney. Anna Rose Whitney. Yeah, now, that, that doesn't sound southern. southern. I don't know what does. I know her name's Anna Rose Whitney, and look at her flowers. She's gorgeous. I mean, this one is, this one is perfect right here. This one's got, been blooming a while, but this one is absolutely perfect. And I want y'all to know it was about this big when I planted it, and now look at it. I mean, it's just between the rows and this, and this banana shrub, we're like in sensory overlay. Yeah. When I come out and it's warm, I can smell the banana shrub all the way around. I can't leave here. I can't move. I would have to go feed first. And what's the most amazing thing is this whole panorama is going to change in about a week. The things that are, the lilies are going to start blooming. Mm -hmm. uh, more of the hoopers are going to be sending up little flowers because if you look over there, that one's got really, really pink flowers. In about two weeks, the hostas will be sending up flowers. You can tell I like hostas. But we're going to walk back to the hosta farm. But you may want to get in on a close-up of this. I mean, this is, this is just, this is just, I have wanted for years for somebody to walk through my garden and take it. Because I can talk about it till the cows come home. But until you actually walk in it, I can show a hooker and say, this is wonderful. And when you walk through it and you see how, how different they all are when you realize how splendid Mother Nature is. And you look, every one of them is different. And look at this. I mean, there's no way on PowerPoint that I can show you this. So, there's not. I mean, I can show you a picture. But it, and even on video, it just doesn't, it just doesn't. It's just cool to see in real life. It is. It is. It's just incredible. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go directly to the hosta farm because it's best. There's another carex right there. This this is another one right here. Like the naked ladies. 
yard. This is a, if you want a, if you want a Japanese maple that can take the heat, this is it. We call it Tamuki. It's Tamukiyama. And you can see it's a weeper. And notice how when the light shines on it that the leaves look a bunch of different colors. Mm -hmm. Turn around and look at this one and look, look. Wow. And look how the light shines yeah. on it. And, and you get burgundy and brown and yes, green and yes and orange and it's yes. just really wonderful. Now is this the same one as that one over there? These two it the same? Could be, but I So yes, I may have a couple, but I, I really love, I, I'm not sure because look at all the different shades yeah. in here that, that that is more of a purple one. Yeah, it sure So is. I'm thinking that they may not be the Unless same Unless this thing. is because it's in the sun too, yeah. I wonder. But anyway, they're both Traditionally, gorgeous. that doesn't, uh, that flower does not, that tree does not have all this shading in it. And these are some of my What's, um, Sherry, what's this above the camellia? Oh, that is another native. Some people call it Grancy Graybeard, or it's called Fringe Tree. Mm -hmm. And it is just, the more sun it has, the more it likes it. And this tree over it was hanging down too low, and we lost some of it in a storm or something. Does but it smell? No. No. But it's, but it's pretty. But it's called a fringe tree, and you see why. Yeah. And very I've, lacy. Had, I've had to cut it back a little bit. Now, this is the Laura Pedalum that ate Jacksonville. Can you see, guys, that it's bigger than my house? It's called Chang's Ruby, and I got it from Jimmy Roberts at Golden Springs Nursery. Can y'all see where, how, how big it is? This is what we affectionately call the Hosta Farm. Okay. And I have some men that come in every year. They help me put new soil in it. I have done it on my own, but since I turned 70 and some, I can't drag the dirt around, but I have collected hosta, and I just kept buying them and buying them until I have the hosta farm, and we just rearranged it. And I love the ones with the great big giant leaves and inside the two blooming are what are viburnums and then there's another little japanese maple in there but yes we we call this the hosta farm and i just added three new hostas to it where they are i am not quite sure there are more hostas in the front but this is this is like the big hosta farm and i had a special sprinkler system put in here to keep them watered and unfortunately when it gets real wet they will be unhappy and some of them will droop and, and go dormant but i love my hostas and i baby them i have got to come out and put some osmocote slow release fertilizer on them and make sure that they have all they need I just haven't gotten there yet, but that's going to be my, probably my project for this afternoon. I was waiting for the last frost to go before I fertilized it. I want to show you this. This is called drinking gourd, and we see that something made a hole in it. But do you see how the cups look like something that you could drink out of? See how they're turned up like yeah. almost gourds that you could drink out of? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. One thing about hostas is if you have hail, they will tear them up. The other thing about hostas is if deer love them, I found out that the deer were jumping my five foot fence and coming back here and I discovered all the plants that were missing back here and I stomped around and I, I came up with a really good idea that I want to show you. For people whose deer these are the traditional um, evergreen azaleas that get huge. But you can see that's my deer fence. And we found out, I was sitting up there, 
And this doe just comes walking by like she owned my yard. Huh? So somebody told me to make my own deer fence. So we put these big stakes up. We put the wires across it. And then we put the flags on it so she could see it. And I mean, that stopped them cold because she was jumping the fence here, going through the yard, having a snack bar. And there's one back there where they were also jumping in. They were jumping over that fence, coming all the way up here, snacking on everything that they could snack on. Mountain laurel. Oh. And if you go to North Carolina or up north Alabama, the, um, it's almost finished blooming, but maybe you can get one. Here's one that's still kind of pretty. Now, isn't this a rhododendron? Is this a no, it's, it's a not. mountain laurel. It's mountain laurel, okay. And it's an evergreen okay. shrub that stays this big and doesn't drop its leaves. And about a week ago, it it was unbelievable. This is a loquat tree. The flowers on it smell so good and they perfume the yard but it doesn't make any loquats so that you can eat. And if you'll see, the sap suckers have gotten to it and made little circles all around it. And I just hope that it doesn't die because this is, I mean, look at the size of this tree. Mm -hmm. It's been here a while, but the flowers smell so Now, good. is loquat, is it a kind of a fruit or something? Yes, oh, but okay. this one doesn't produce It doesn't produce, produce any fruit. And these were all native azaleas, and when they're not blooming, they're not, you know, they're yeah, not they're just, anything you'd write home about. And but this when, one has one little flower left on it. Yeah, that is, that flower is an evergreen, and it's an encore. And that's a rebloomer, so it will bloom again. And this is, this is a gorgeous Japanese maple. That is pretty. Look, look at the leaves on there. Oh, they're striated. Yes, oh, that, they're, cool. that, look at all the color. They're actually, the word is variegated. Variegated. They're variegated. They're variegated. It is pretty. Yeah, and sometimes I pinch, sometimes one will revert and I'll pinch it off, but it's, that's variegated. And I, I don't, I had a label for it, but it's been out here about 20 something years. But you can tell the size of it. How you judge a maple is by the caliper. And they actually measure them to see what the caliper is. And you see, I can't even get my hands around this one. I got this tree when I, the first year I started Master Gardeners, Hayes Jackson had a friend who raised Japanese maples. And she brought a bunch down that were in gallon pots and they were $10 a piece. And this is one of them. And you see, you can look all the way up and see it. Yeah. And these are different kinds of encore azaleas. These were white. And they're the, here is a beautiful, beautiful tree. And I'm going to get down here and, and lift up this oh, so y'all can see it. A trillium? Yes, this is a trillium. And it will bloom, right? Uh, these are the blooms. You wouldn't actually call it a flower, but uh -huh. those in the gardening world actually love it. See, this is the bloom right okay. here. That's the flower. Okay. And this is a very obnoxious plant. It's an iris that walks, and it walks everywhere, even if you don't want it to. And I've never had it in the backyard, but it managed to walk up here. But yeah, you see the, the little flower? I mean, mm -hmm. it's the dearest little thing, and the deer didn't seem to bother it, but it's because they may not have seen it. <laughs> oh, this is, I mentioned this in my Azalea program. This is a Chinsan Azalea. A what kind of name? Chinsan. C-H-I-N-D-A-N. Okay. Satsuki. Okay. It's a Satsuki Chinsan. Okay. And it never gets any taller, it just keeps getting wider and wider. And it blooms really late, and it has sort of a lavender-y pink type flower on it. Okay. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, but it never gets any taller. So it can nestle underneath all these trees. It can nestle with the hellebores and under the trees, and just, it's almost like a ground cover, but oh, okay. not. 
But if you look around, those are all oak leaf hydrangeas, which are the state wildflower for Alabama. And more hellebores are Lenten roses, and they're all finishing up blooming, and they turn green, even though they were purple, they were maroon, they were pink, they were white. Now they're all kind of so. Do their blooms fall off at all, or they just stay on all year? No, they'll okay. fall off. Oh, will they? Okay. What they're going to do yeah. is they're going to go to seed, see the oh, seed. Oh, I see the seed. Yeah. And then they'll eventually just kind of drop off, or okay. if I get tired of them, I'll pick them off. And you see that I like them because that tall, tall tree right there is a Sanku Taku Pearl Bark Maple. In the winter, the bark turns bright, 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 bright red. And in the fall, that foliage is red. Excuse me, the foliage is yellow. I'm looking at the red tree right next to it. The foliage turns just bright, as yellow as you can get. The one next to it actually turns red. It's kind of an orangey color. Mm -hmm. It's called Oregon Sunset. It turns red. That one turns green. I don't remember what color this one turns, but this is another one of those short fat babies. It may be, it's not, I don't think it's the same short fat baby as in the front, but it's not tall, but see how big it is? And it can nestle in the trees and in the bushes. It's a nestler. Thank All you, right. Sherry. This is beautiful. This is a And nice. it's just gorgeous. Let me just tell you. I know it's gorgeous. And the color is vibrant and mm -hmm. vivacious. Exactly. And it smells. You have got to smell this. And get up real close to it with your hand. Oh, yeah. There's they just oh, change all over. And, and look, you see it's kind of of a yeah. darker orange and then it changes yeah. to this color orange. And this one, most of the others have already bloomed, but this is a later bloom. Now what is this? It's a native azalea. Oh, okay. It has no tag on it, so I can't tell you its real but name. But it's very unusual. They're all unusual. They're all beautiful. They're, they're be oh, excuse me. They are beautiful. They're magnificent. They are magnificent. I will agree. I, I, I will tell you that this is magnificent. This is, I mean, it looks like sunset, doesn't it? I, yes. Yeah. In a way, sunset at the beach. Yeah. But mm, the smell is just, you know, in the winter, it's just like a pile of sticks. But when it starts to do its thing, I mean, step aside. And let me just be what I'm going to be, because I'm going to be a treat. So, Jean, you know Sherry comes to the library and does programs for us. Oh, yeah. And she mentions you quite often <laughs> in the programs. What do you think about all of her gardening? Well, I, I enjoy it. I'm, I'm not a particularly good gardener, but I'm, I, I really do enjoy it very do you, much. Do you think she ever tries to sneak things in the yard you don't know about? I think she pretends to. She knows I don't really care. <laughs> I don't get upset about anything. If, and that's what she tells us, is that you really don't get upset about I anything. Do, I do not. So what would you say is your favorite part of your yard? What do you like best in the yard? I, li I, I like the backyard. I like the, the way the paths wind around. We also have a, uh, a statue of Pan that the lady at the, at the place where we bought it called Pam. Oh. <laughs> so um, the tornado took down quite a few of your trees oh, yes. and things like that, oh, yes. but it looks like you were able to build, or Sherry was able to build Sherry, the yard back up. Sherry and, and Quint Davis <laughs> and his crew. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Anything that you'd like those, the audience at the library to know about Sherry? Anything you want to share yeah, about her? She's a mad gardener, that's what she is. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> we agree. Thank you so much. My neighbors are redoing their yard, so I could not schedule the noise. I apologize. I did ask them to stop, and they told me they couldn't. Right, you and I have a prostate. Oh. You look, look at the new, the new growth.
ghost on it. It's just beautiful. <laughs> I'm getting in front of you. What kind of you is it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it was a prostrate view. It's supposed to be prostrate. Isn't it prostrate? Straight? You, not a prostate. prostate. <laughs> 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 Uh, He's going to edit this. Okay, this is an upright <laughs> knee. Over there, I have a prostrate <laughs> knee. Okay, this is an upright <laughs> knee. Over there, I have a prostrate <laughs> knee. Yes, I'm like An uh, Andy on NYPD Blue. He had prostate cancer, and he kept calling it prostrate <laughs> cancer. And everybody kept saying, no, no, no.